Do I really need another Christmas journal? I think I do. Hey, it's Care. Welcome to my take at the lake. I'm using this box that I got from some scissors I got from Amazon because it has that nice spine in it. And I want to keep as much of the box as I can. So I'm just opening up everything gingerly so I don't tear anything. I'm doing a voiceover, by the way, because while I was recording this, my house was filled with worker men and they were running their power tools and making all kinds of noise, so it was impossible to record. But it wasn't impossible to play. Then I tore off all of the tape and shiny stuff because I'm going to be gluing things down with my DIY Mod Podge. I got a little carried away, so now I have to glue that spot back up. Easy peasy was an easy fix. If everything was that easy, right? I have this box, and it's filled with bits and pieces of last year's and previous year's Christmas paper. Good news, I found a bag that I set up with my Christmas washi and this box of papers and napkins and all things Christmas papery related that I have access to so I can play. Yes, Virginia, there really is a Santa Claus. So you see I'm pulling out all kinds of different papers because I'm going to be doing a patchwork journal cover. And I thought I took out way too much. <laughs> But you'll see that I, I have to go back for seconds later on in the video. So many pretty papers. I love that old-fashioned Santa. He's so cute. Although, later on in the video, you also see I he's not quite old-fashioned enough. So I, I grunge him up a bit with my, again, my homemade Mod Podge with some coffee. I love these napkins, though I don't use them in this particular project. I love these boxes. My mom got me a whole set of them and I keep them in my Christmas kit. This is a misprint of another from my other kit that I didn't want to waste so that's going to be part of this project as well. It can be torn bits, it can be regular bits and oh look my my book. My book that I made Snazzy Snips, An Overload of Christmas Cute, more than 500 super cute images. But I'm not going through it today for the images. I'm looking for every single page as a beautiful back backing page. So it's about a zero waste, almost a zero waste project. If you don't like the critters on the front page, there's beautiful stuff on the back page. And I'm looking for some patterns like this. There's several different Christmas plaids in this book. So I just cut out little bits and pieces to use for my patchwork cover. There's a different one there that I I cut a piece out of. And yes, I have to say goodbye to the sloth. I didn't use him on the front. I used the plaid on the back. And the book has, I will tag the video on the, on the end of this video, but it has stamps and these kind of stamps and faux washi tape and lots and lots of winter images as well as Christmas. It's not all Christmas. There's a lot of both winter and Christmas. Again, Snazzy Snips presents an overload of Christmas cute available today on Amazon. There's also a planner size version for smaller projects and mini projects. I'm using my Plain Jane metal ruler and this cheap Dollar Tree ruler that I notched out uh, maybe with my my box cutter. I'm not sure how I, I did them all. There's a video on my channel about how I made the Dollar Tree tearing rulers. And they just give it a nice, the ruler just gives the papers a nice rough watercolory type edge, watercolor paper type edge versus just a straight edge from this from the metal ruler. And I just go about tearing up different sizes. There you can see the rough edge that that ruler leaves, the pink one. I used 
that brown craft paper is just packing from Am an Amazon order. I try to use either three or five of each paper. Working in odd numbers is pretty good for pretty good design rule to follow. Some I cut. I cut out the shapes of those Christmas trees. Most I tore. I love this tissue, but it's bright white, and I don't want my cover bright white. So I just hit it with my coffee spray. I took it out to the sink to let it dry over the top of the faucet. I'm using my Distress Oxides to grunge up the edge of all these little bits of paper that I just cut out or tore up. Uh, black soot, walnut stain, and vintage photo. I didn't use daubers, I just used the ink pad. Either on the side or on the top. There's my homemade Mod Podge. Again, there's a recipe uh, free on my Patreon page. If you go to my Patreon page and search Mod Podge, it'll come right up for you. And there is a printable PDF. Super easy. What I love about it is there's no sheen. Like, unlike the matte version of the regular Mod Podge, even the matte version has quite a bit of sheen. And I have, with the homemade Mod Podge recipe on the Patreon page, a before and after picture. I used the regular matte Mod Podge on my Boston's journal, altered book journal. And that was the only thing I didn't like about it was how shiny that cover was. Well, once I made this homemade Mod Podge, I thought, well, let me, let me try it on there. And it made the world of difference, a world of difference. So I think I will always use my homemade Mod Podge versus the store-bought. Number one, it's a lot cheaper but primarily it doesn't have that super shiny sheen. And at the end of this project, even as this dries, you can see it's not shiny at all. I love it. And it can be vintaged up. I just added a little bit of coffee to it, my coffee spray, and it will vintage up anything. You'll see that later in the video. While you're doing this, if you're if you're putting papers over the spine like I am here, make sure to keep bending it and bend it while the papers are wet so that you can see where it's going to bubble or affect. You can still move it. There, you see, I went back for more. I, ha I didn't have nearly enough bits and pieces for this tiny little cover. I was surprised. Of course, I'm overlapping them quite a bit. I wanted that pop of purple because that's what I really liked about the inspiration picture, which you'll see at the end of the video as well. A pop of purple, I think, just adds yumminess to anything, but it was shiny. There's a couple, two or three different material uh, papers that are metallic and shiny, and the Mod Podge just sort of beads up, and you'll see later that, oh, I have a hard time sticking a few things down. But I kept at it and kept at it because I really wanted those pieces there. <laughs> Stubborn. But I won. Most of the pieces you'll see are rectangle, different sized rectangles. But there are a couple, like the part on the right toward the top, the red green and white striped piece that's just torn and I think that adds a little bit of something yummy to it too. I, I didn't do too many of those, one or two, but I really like the effect of one or two misshapen pieces. And that's only because it's one of my favorite papers and I don't have much of it left and I didn't want to waste it. <laughs> I'm really jazzed about doing Christmas stuff. That's all I want to do right now is Christmas craft. Of course, that's impossible because I have a million other things to do, but 
I'm super jazzed about doing Christmas crafts, especially because I found that bag. I will show you in another video the bag that I speak of and what's inside makes doing Christmas crafts infinitely easier. My Christmas overload of Christmas cute book was in there, both this planner size and the regular size, and that made things a lot easier. I show the book in another video as well, working on the tall skinny Christmas journal that I made a few days ago. Over at the top left, there's a piece of buffalo plaid, that red and black plain piece without the snowflakes, just above Joy there. That is a piece of tissue paper, and I wasn't quite sure how that was going to work, but it worked out really well. And I just keep adding pieces and adding pieces, covering up the brown. In hindsight, I'm not quite sure why I did the brown paper since it's a brown bag. And I ended up covering most of the brown pieces of paper. But in hindsight, I might stamp those pieces with Christmas stamps or numbers or something. Uh, of course, my Christmas stamps are packed away in my Christmas boxes, so I don't have access to those. Unfortunately, they are not in the magic bag. Though now that I think about it, Leanne's mom... And Leanne brought me some Christmas stamps, and those those were just recently cited, so I might be able to, I might have access to one or two Christmas stamps. This took quite a bit of time. Obviously, I've speeded it up here by eight times. And I did it in different increments. I did the first little bit in, you know, half hour setting and then went back to it and did another half hour and another half hour. Then I had to go downstairs and find extra wrapping paper and then re-cut all those and then re-edge them all with the inks, the oxides. So this did not happen in less than 30 minutes. It took quite a while, but I think it was worth it. It was fun to play with the papers, to do my Christmas crafts. As soon as I got this box, I knew I wanted to make a journal out of it. Now I'm putting on some of that white glittery tissue that I sprayed with the coffee spray. And it just adds a little tiny bit of sparkle to it, which is super fun. I just remembered I, I have that huge bag of gold or silver stars and that little box of red, green, and gold stars. I could add some of those. That might be what I'll do next. Actually, at the end of the video, I tell you what my plans are to do to the cover because even by the end of the video, I'm, it's just not quite where I want it and I, I kind of think I know what I want to do at the end and after I do that, I will add the stars. So I can talk now. There's not a lot of construction going on. Everyone has left for the day. <laughs> it's been crazy around here. So it's all dry. I'm going to flip it over and work on the inside for just a few minutes. I have this digital kit. I will put the link below to the digital kit that I purchased. I pulled this up to Canva and resized it for what I wanted to use it for. Because the kit, it comes in A4 or US letter size. And the kit comes ready to print full size, borderless, fold it in half. And it has two pages per. And I wanted one page. So I took it up to Canva and I cropped the photo down just to the piece that I wanted. And then I downloaded that as a PDF and printed it full size borderless. And it happens to fit this box perfectly. And I didn't feel like digging out my scoreboard. This box already has score marks for the spine and I'm going to try to keep it as a box. Of course with all the Mod Podge and the extra paper it's getting kind of stiff so I may end up cutting this off but I love that that number is still on there so 
I'm, I'm going to try my best to keep it. That's the whole point of this using this box was to keep it as a box. Wait, because it already has the score lines, I didn't need to get out my scoreboard. I laid this right on top where I wanted it to be in between these two holes. And, and, and I didn't feel like getting my scoreboard out, so I got this tiny, tiny little crochet hook. I keep it in here because when my sweaters get snagged, I use one, I use this to pull the snags back through to the inside so they're not as obnoxious. But whatever's laying around, something with a soft pointy round. I would have used my bone folder, but that's still packed away in my travel kit. So I grabbed what I had, which is this thing. I just laid it on here, lined it up, and then just scored the paper where the score lines are in the box. Now we're gonna put this out. I'm getting more use out of this gun than I have this month than I have all year. I like to start in the middle because if you get the middle right, the rest should go fairly easily. Get my line. Oh, I should. Hello, hold. I just want to be done. I, I want to move on. Now I can line it up. And I'm eyeballing from this hole to this hole down here and giving myself about the same amount of room in between. I want to make sure my score lines are lined up. Yeah, there's a little bit of snow on the ground and now we have to do donuts. Why? Say it along with me. Because they're perpetually 12 years old. In case you can't hear it, they are doing donuts out in the middle of the road, revving their engines and being 12. Even though they're adults with their own offspring. a bit of bubbling in there. Can't have that. I don't know what I'm going to do with the second one, but I wanted to make it, and I'm making it. So there. I just want to do Christmassy crafts. So I'm a gonna. Jean Bainey told me a long time ago that she just really liked her Avery glue. She used to get it at the Dollar Tree. So I ran out to our Dollar Tree. And they don't carry Avery. They carry Jot, which is their own brand. But I, I have to agree with her. It's pretty good glue as far as cheap glues go. It's not terribly expensive. And it seems to last pretty well and hold pretty well, which is important in this gig. Now, even with all my planning and all my scoring, it's still a little bit off. My score lines are all lined up. This is why I don't do math, because sometimes it just, not that it's math's fault that it didn't work out, but something screwy, because it was exactly the right size and a fold fold it so that that spine gives fold this side out and this side I said out I meant down see how much paper's left over even though planned it all out scored it all blah 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 still you know it happens whatever Oh, I didn't do the edges like I did on the other side. That's going to be problematic. It's not very pretty, but it's a fairly effective to bend, just bending that over and giving it some more glue, giving it some glue because I didn't give it any. I just glued it down and I poked a hole through it. 
right there. I have also taken the kit that I bought for this journal up to Canva, as I said, and resized it. I made a custom design in Canva, custom size, for this journal. And now that I have the cover ready, I'm going to double check the measurements. I may have to resize it on Canva. We'll have to see, but that is a video for another day. Today, we're just doing the cover. So I'm gonna get rid of this extra that I have. There, so there's my, this is just random wrapping paper that I had either in my Christmas craft bag. I even, I ran out of the little bits that I started with and I went downstairs and gathered up some more that I had. I have him. Maybe he can go on the inside like that. The inside cover. It'd be way easier. I can hear you. Why don't you just use the art glitter glue with that little metal tip? It'd be way easier to get down in that little tiny bit of glue. And it absolutely would, but it's a liquid glue. And there's a lot of water in it. And that would ruin my print. So... That's why I don't use the art glitter glue when it seems like that would make the most sense. So now I've got the cover out of that scissors box. I have to fold those in or can I get rid of those? I fold this in. Fold that down. Yeah, I guess I do. It's gonna fold back into itself like that around. I get rid of those. Will this still just stick in there? I don't know. I'm going to have to keep playing with it. I might cut these off. I might not. I might have to leave them for some good reason that I'm too tired to figure out right now. I don't know. He might not go in there. He can go on a page maybe, but I don't know. But I love how the, the cover has turned out. Now, if I can't keep it like a box, I can always cut cut the box ends off, but I just really like the idea of what looks like a box sitting on a shelf actually being a surprise journal when you open it up. So I'm gonna go play with the interior, get the sizes right, because it has to it has to fit really well in there if I'm gonna keep this end on. So we'll see. But I really like how it turned out, just random. And I'll show you the picture here that inspired me. I saw this at Halloween and I just really, really like it. It looks like material, but I think it's paper that's just torn and edged like we did here. I may go over this with something I'm not sure. Maybe a little bit of gesso with coffee in it so it's dull, not white. I don't know. I'm not quite there yet with this cover, but it's a work in progress. Love the interior. And I guess that's why I kind of want to... This is kind of dreamy and in sort of fuzzy out of focus, and this is not. And so I want to do something on this to make it more dreamy. And I think if I put some, maybe some gesso and some Mod Podge with some coffee, I put Mod Podge and coffee on him because he was quite, he was quite bright. And I wanted him a little less bright. And so that's coffee and Mod Podge. And so I think I'll add just a whisper of gesso with some coffee and Mod Podge and do one coat over that. But that is for another day. I'll keep you posted. In the meantime, you go love up your beastlies. 
Make sure they're on Santa's list and they get lots of goodies too. Have a lovely crafty day. I take at the lake, out for now.